some of the dialogue after the last staff survey um, was quite testing. You know, we committed to go into the room, close the door, and no one was going to walk out. It was just open session, say what we wanted to say, management side, FBU, with a firm commitment from both sides that it is in fact the authority that comes first. You know, we need to protect fire cover and we need to make sure in doing so our staff fully understand why the difficult routes being trod by both the FBU and by the service. And we had countless meetings. Um, we met regularly with Wendy Kenyon, um, who should be thanked for, for her input as well, because she sort of facilitated a lot of the dialogue uh, around, you know, how could we improve our communications, what should we prioritise, how do we address the concerns of our members and the staff within the Side Fire and Rescue Service. And as I say, it was some of those meetings were quite testing. Um, you know, some sides were offended. We took offence to some stuff, I'm sure service managers did. But we never left the room until we had a pathway and a route to get through this. Uh, and I think that we have, as the councillor says, there are things that we need to address. We're committed to do that, but the, we're heading the right way now, which is really, really important. And as Dan said himself, against the backdrop of what we've been through over the last five, six years, it is a tremendous result to start moving in the right direction. It would have been very easy for us just to have slid back and just all put the, door, uh, the drawbridge up and slid back into our own respective trenches. We haven't done that. We've committed not to do that and we'll continue the work to turn around the results that the council has mentioned before and make sure that the next server in two years' time is even better than the last one. Chair, the purpose of this report is to request members approve the release of the draft IRMP for 2017 through 20 for a period of 12 weeks consultation prior to approval by the authority of what would be the definitive version in February 2017. You'd be aware, members, that the authority is required to produce an integrated risk management plan which must, to quote the Fire and Rescue Service framework, identify and assess all foreseeable fire and rescue related risks. And as I said, that is a requirement that is set out within the fire and rescue service national framework. The framework also directs the authority to make provision to respond to incidents such as fires, road traffic collisions, and other emergencies, and that must be reflected within the integrated risk management plan, which from here on in I will prepare and refer to as the IRMP. If I can draw your attention to page 100. 12 of your committee papers, which is the introduction <coughs> I've written to the IRMP, and specifically within this uh, introduction, what I've attempted to do is to set out the organisational context through making a number of key points, which, uh, which are that the risk profile of Merseyside is changing. After several decades of decline, our population is now beginning to increase. And as we've established earlier on when speaking to the fatalities report, a lot of that increase is due to the fact that the population is ageing. We've already established previously, and indeed we've referred back to in, in the report on the, the accidental drone fire fatalities, that there is a well-established link between old age and vulnerability in particular from fire. 
face increased environmental challenges and we also face significantly increased challenges for the declared terrorists. The reality is though, and as I make the point here, I make no apologies for it in the introduction, as Ken Knight said, we do resource the budget, but our budget's finance, uh, finite rather, and it's reduced year on year, which means that the ability for us to improve our service is significantly limited and in fact it's nigh on impossible to do that now and I've made that point clear in the past that a lot of the proposals, actually all of the operational response proposals we've had to make are framed as least worst options rather necessarily as options which would improve our performance simply because you cannot do that and it is folly to suggest that you can and it's not something that uh, as you know I Proposals within the ILMP were developed around the set of planning principles which are outlined at page 141. At the strategy day in July, we explained the outline response proposals that we developed and which are set out in more detail on page 142. In simple terms, members, we can no longer afford to crew all of our existing appliances on a whole time basis. And as we have no more realistic station merging options to pursue, the next least impactive option that you can pursue is to crew non-key stations on a whole time basis during the period of highest demand from an operational response and service delivery perspective, which is the daytime, as we've established previously. That logic is covered in more detail within the bullet point list on page 144, which I'll return to momentarily. The chart on page 143 sets out the distribution of light first instance per hour and the numbers of immediately available fire appliances which would be delivered through the IRMP proposals. To be clear, members, that is light first instance and emergency medical response. And what that shows is that the best timings, if you like, to have that availability would be from half eight in the morning until half eight at night. Unlike, for example, our colleagues over in Greater Manchester who are advancing 10 o'clock till 10 o'clock on 11 o'clock till 11 o'clock uh, shift duration times, which to be clear would be, I think it's fair to say, would be quite unpartable to, uh, to our staff. As I've stated, the, the other areas of our demand are also greatest during the daytime period. So I'll give you some examples of what we can undertake training during the daytime, which would be much more problematic to undertake at night. For example, core skills training on a station yard, because quite a lot of our fire stations are in the vicinity of houses. And with the best will in the world, our neighbours probably aren't going to appreciate us out drilling at two or three o'clock in the morning. It's just a fact. By the same token, the overwhelming majority of our community safety interventions are undertaken during the daytime. You know, in our view, it would not be appropriate to undertake on fire safety checks outside of our periods of 08.30 to 20.30 hours. You know, we are not going to be knocking on people's doors at 10, 11 o'clock at night. It's just not appropriate for us to do that. The map on page 145 of the report provides a visual, <coughs> a visual representation of the extent of the changes in terms of the crew arrangements. So your colour-coded key, that shows you what the different uh, crew arrangements would be on the, the fire appliances. The specific proposals for preparedness are set out at page 147 and they are concerned with de uh, delivering an uplift in our specialist response capabilities for MTFA, so for open terrorist firearms attack, urban search and rescue and flood response. The proposals for prevention, which are set out on pages 148 and 149, are concerned with implementing safe and well visits, which would represent an extension to the home fire safety uh, check visit, which the chair has previously alluded to. The development of community safety hubs, digital, uh, digital inclusion and volunteers. The proposals for protection are set out on page 150, and a concern with the development 
of our risk-based inspection program, the concept of business safety advisors, the protection response team, and around the Better Business for All initiative. The five equality objectives are set out on pages 151 to 153. To bring you back to the Covenant report, members, the recommendation is that you approve the release of the draft IRMP for a period of 12 weeks public consultation, after which officers and consider all of the views that are being expressed and take those views into account, particularly to, for us to produce a final IRMP for your approval at the budget meeting in February next year. I pause at that point, Chair, to take any questions. The purpose of this report, members, is set out in paragraphs 1 to 4 on page 163. Now, I appreciate members will, by now, all be well aware of the background pertaining to the fire fifth one, so I won't revisit that in any way. The substantive issues to note are those which are set out in paragraphs 5 and paragraphs 10 in the report, specifically in relation to the impact of the revenue contributions from Liverpool City Council, which from the outset was made absolutely clear we're going to reduce over the three year period. In that three year period, the Five Fifth Hub, like many other charities, has faced significant financial challenges. Much work has, however, been undertaken to secure a sustainable long term operating model and huge credit needs <coughs> to go to Phil Garrigan, to Janet Henshaw, to Peter, and others who've been involved in, uh, in getting us to this point. Members have previously been made aware of the three options that have been identified and considered by the Toxford Five Fifth Hub Trustees. The detail appertaining to the Liverpool Mutual Homes proposal is set out in paragraphs 12 through 16 on page 166. The substantive issues for members to consider <coughs> now are set out in the legal implications section of the report, which is at paragraphs 28 to 34 on pages 168 to 200. Paragraph 32 sets out what members are being uh, asked to consider in the brief. And that reflects the recommendations of the report which is set out previously in paragraphs 5a through to h, which is back on page 163 to 164. So in simple term members, what we're, what we're asking you to either endorse or approve is as follows, is to endorse the transfer of the Toxford Five Fifth Hub charity into Liverpool Mutual Homes Charitable Arm Co Mutual. To agree to enter into a deed of variation with Liverpool City Council and then approve the purchase of the freehold of the Toxford Five Fifth Hub site, including the fire station, for nominal consideration at the conclusion of the grant conditions in 2031. To agree at that point to offer the freehold of the Toxford Five Fifth Hub co-mutual on the understanding that the freehold for the fire station remains with the authority. And just to reassure members, that will ensure that access is maintained to the gym, 